So let's talk about the benefits of Stencil. This is a big commerce theming framework and uh, recently released uh, about a year now. And there's not a lot of information for store owners that are on Blueprint in regards to upgrading to Stencil. What are the benefits of that? Should I do that? And how is that going to impact my business and my site? So uh, BigCommerce put out this blog here and they talk about you know, some of the, I guess, the position that they feel uh, the stencil is going to have. And a lot of it's dedicated to the developer. I mean, it's going to disrupt the, the landscape. Um, some of the features that they're implementing are, you know, the theme editor. They're making it easier for developers to work on. So it's not really related to the business owner specifically. And so there's kind of a lot of question marks out there. So I'm going to break it down for you. Number one thing that we talk about is speed. Okay. So they have a uh, support document here. And if you scroll all the way down, they actually list out kind of all the, the checkpoints of what you get. And I'm going to translate all these, but the performance is the biggest thing. So you're getting a, a 90 page rank out of 100. And they're saying that's best in class and a 74 on mobile compared to a 79 on desktop. And it, the blueprint themes aren't even ranked because some of them aren't mobile friendly at all. So where do these speed improvements come from? I mean, it's good to say a 90, but you know, what does that mean exactly? So I've actually got some code here I want to show you. This is the, uh, the header file that's shown uh, in a, an old blueprint theme. And this is shown on, uh, this is used on every single page. So the head of the file is used on every single page. And this is the problem. So right here, starting on line 19, we have almost 20 CSS files that handle different things. There's a, a CSS file for the slideshow, one for social. You got a whole bunch of files that are doing a whole bunch of uh, uh, impacting the, uh, the look of the site, these CSS files. And every single time you put a, a file in there, actually, here's here's five more uh, and a couple more. So these will require a network request. So a network request has to go and fetch this file, uh, and it's going to be fairly small. The way that Stencil does it is it uses a bundler. So I've got open this uh, base template, and it actually it doesn't have a separate file for the heads, just right here. And you'll see that we actually have one file linked in on this site for uh, some extra fonts that we've added and one file for the theme that's completely bundled up and then we've added two extra files for uh, our own customization for this client and then the client wanted uh, a separate file for him to be able to make edits so we've reduced that from 25 files down to four and in, the, in most cases by default it's typically only two similar thing is done for the JavaScript so let's keep going down here. This is back to our old um, uh, classic next theme here that we're looking at. And we have scrolled down to line 90 and we've got all of these lines here, about 20 lines of CSS files. I'm sorry, JavaScript files. So all of these JavaScript files, again, have to make a network request. So you compare that to stencil. And right down here, we've got three script files that are being loaded in. And actually, this is not even a file that's loaded, it's just a, a script. So we've got two files that are being loaded in for use there. That's huge. I mean, it bundles all of this JavaScript. It actually uh, obfuscates it um, so that uh, people can't be like stealing your JavaScript code. Um, if you have any customizations, that would be important for you or any big features that were developed. But yeah, I mean, it's it's really just compiling everything down and, and bundling it into a single file dramatically reduces the network requests and gets you a nice bump in the speed there. Related to speed, there's dynamic image processing uh, that happens. I'm gonna talk about that in a separate bullet point, um, but we're actually able to dynamically load in uh, images based on device size. And that's gonna be a, a major speed improvement. Now. Stencil also uses a, a, a templating logic system called Handlebars. It's kind of a, a templating framework that lets us get away from creating a whole bunch of different uh, custom templates. So I'm not sure if your store has these or not, but uh, here's a, a client, and we had to create all these separate pages 
all over the place. Uh, and that obviously just kind of increases the, the total amount of code that's in place uh, and makes things a little bit slower. So with Stencil, we're, we have access to handlebars and that lets us do logical things like say, if in the settings there's a privacy cookie, then load the component cookie. If not, then we don't do anything. And that means that the code that's output, the HTML that's output onto your uh, store and has to be downloaded from a mobile phone on a 2G network will now be dramatically reduced in size since we're not just automatically including those components and hiding them. So speed is the number one thing. Uh, pretty much everyone that I've talked to that switched over to Stencil is saying, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, day, a night and day difference. It's way faster. Uh, we're loving it. So got some articles linked there. I can certainly read through those uh, in regards to the speed of things. Now, the second thing is Google AMP. So what is Google AMP pages? Well, it, this is Accelerated Mobile Pages, an acronym there uh, that Google has come up with. It's, it's basically a, um, a way in which developers should code a page so that Google can accept that and make it load faster. So what does that translate to for your business? Well, it, it actually changes the way that the search result looks. So you see here in this example, uh, here's a search result on Google and it puts this little amped uh, signal next to it. And you know, do people know what that is? Do your customers know what that is? Maybe not, um, but it, it's, an extra, it's an extra little flag that kind of sets your search results out from the rest. And uh, there's obviously gonna be some sort of uh, prioritization given to sites that are using Amped as well. So we've got to take that into consideration. Now, but the big feature is that when you actually click this, it doesn't load, it doesn't go to your website. It loads a separate screen right on top of Google search results and it's lightning fast. Um, so Stencil has that baked into it uh, by default and uh, Blueprint is not does not have the capability to implement Google Amped pages at all. So potentially better for search placement on mobile, uh, extremely fast load times on mobile. Uh, and then there's this article here, I'll link you to that as well. So you can uh, take a look at that if you're more interested. All right, so the, the third big feature of Stencil would be the dynamic image processing that I was talking about. And they're using a, a partner for this called uh, Akamai and they're phrasing Akamai Image Manager. So essentially what you do whenever you upload a, a product photo, right? Well, you've got this huge product photo that's like 1600 by 500. And on Blueprint, it's gonna load that file and, and the user, whether they're on mobile or desktop, they're gonna have to download that huge image. So uh, this Akai Image Manager will essentially recognize the device you're on and uh, it has several, it makes several different copies of this in the back office. Um, and then it will load a smaller version of that to a mobile device or a tablet, or it'll load the, the, the big zoomed in image right on desktop. So that's just kind of a, a poor explanation of how that works. But, um, and, and this is really cool technology, but again, it kind of speaks to increasing the speed of the site, but this feature is not available, um, uh, to blueprint. So you, you kind of gain access to that. Now, the fourth feature here is it's pretty cool, and they just released this, and it's called the Store Credit Card Management System, right? So Store Credit Card Management now allows your users to have their credit card information saved at checkout, and then they can go into their account section. This is a, a screenshot um, of a user on an account page, and they would see their credit cards after clicking into that area, so they could delete them, edit them, uh, add a new payment method. And this obviously just uh, grants you um, some impact in the, in the conversion rate optimization category, right? So users can kind of quickly check out, uh, not having to punch in credit card details, maybe capture some sales that would otherwise be lost. All right, so our fifth major feature of, of moving to Stencil is going to be local development. So with Stencil, we now have this ability to spin up your exact site on our local machines. Um, and here's an example of one. So you can see up here in the top, I've actually got uh, localhost 3000, right? So this is sashanicholas.com. This is an exact replica. So now I have a development server here on my local machine that lets me 
make changes to the code. And uh, here it is running in my, in my command line. So I can make changes to the code and preview those changes uh, without affecting the live site. And this is really cool because it uses all of your uh, it uses the API of BigCommerce to pull in all of the live products, um, all of the live settings from the back office. So this is literally an, an exact replica. So anything that I make, any changes I make here, I can now preview these with the client um, and make sure that everything's all good before we push it live. Then we bundle it and and set a release on that. All right. So the sixth item here is the theme editor. Okay, so what does that look like? So the theme editor is really cool. It, it, there was kind of a, this broken, you, you view your site in Blueprint and you have the ability to kind of move some things around. It, it never worked. So the theme editor gives us a lot of capabilities. I'm gonna pull one up here. All right, so we can now click customize and it brings us to this new theme editor uh, preview of the site. So I've got a full preview here in desktop mode. And now I can just click through here um, and change, say, like the colors for anything. And it's not just limited to colors and fonts, as you saw here. We can kind of update uh, some things. But we can, as developers, we can actually push features to you um, and allow those to be controlled through the back office. So, for example, we developed a feature for this client uh, where we put their recent posts down here at the bottom you know, in these blog posts. Well, how many do we want to show, right? Is it three, six, nine, or disabled? So I can actually allow the client to say, okay, well, we don't want to show these recent posts anymore. Um, we've also done like site-wide messages, right? Like uh, here's a site-wide message up here. And they can type in the text that they want to display. So if you're changing your deal, boom, you can put that there. Well, what happens when you click on this? right here and just put in a, a link to where this should go when the user clicks on it. So now you can kind of uh, see all of this live, play with your theme and uh, kind of modify some things. Very, very powerful feature. It also has cross device preview. So you notice up here, I can see what the site's gonna look like on a tablet or on a mobile phone, right? Very, very cool. Um, easy review uh, and save common theme style or updates, colors, font size settings. Um, and then site customizations can be controlled by the theme editor, um, like I mentioned, the site-wide message. Now, the next big feature is localization. Now, this was uh, back whenever we started working with BigCommerce in 2009. <laughs> Had a ton of people hitting us up, like, translate our site, you know, and, and how do we do that, right? Like, do we, do we do it with JavaScript? Do we make two different versions of the site? It's very difficult to manage. And Stencil gives us that ability through what they call a language file. So here is the English version, en.json, and I can go through every single piece of, of text and change what I want that to call, uh, what that want that to be called, right? So maybe they don't want to say add to cart, they want to say add to bag, right? So I can do that. So it's not only uh, localization in terms of like uh, changing languages or internationalization, so to speak, uh, but you can kind of change the copy uh, and you don't have to contact your developer for that. You can do that here. So we could uh, also create a es.json uh, for Spanish, right? Uh, you can change you can create it for all of these different languages in one place. Now, if the customer were to on the front end say, let's change the, uh, you know, let's switch over to the Spanish version of the site, that's very easy to do. Okay, so our eighth feature for upgrading to Stencil from Blueprint is that Stencil is built from the ground up with mobile in mind. So a couple of years ago, there was this big push by Google to have your, uh, your store be what they call mobile friendly, not to be confused with responsive. Um, but if you have a mobile friendly store, then it actually impacts your search ranking, right? So a couple of things that I've already touched on here, but BigCommerce Stencil gives us the ability to use handlebars, which kind of directly plays with the developer's ability to make a theme mobile friendly. Um, and it implements other best coding practices to here to Google's mobile friendly requirements. So handlebars is a good example of that. Um, you know, bundling using SAS framework is a good example of just kind of using best coding practices. But every single stencil theme has to be mobile friendly. They can't uh, upload it to the theme store. They can't release it to the, th to the theme store unless it's mobile friendly. So you know what you're getting 
um, and it just is a great starting point. So the ninth feature is actually access to new BigCommerce features. And what does that mean exactly? Well, BigCommerce is rolling features out, right? Like this uh, automated image optimization, um, like the uh, credit card uh, storage management utility. And as they roll these features out, they're not putting these features onto Blueprint themes anymore, right? They've segmented that. Um, they, they do still have to support the Blueprint theme, but you're not going to have access to any new features that BigCommerce comes out. And so it's really just kind of a ticking time bomb there. Uh, it's just a matter of time before uh, you will need to upgrade because you're going to be missing out on some key things. Also, Google AMP pages, right? Won't have access to that. So our 10th and final feature of upgrading to Stencil from Blueprint is having access to Stencil-only apps. So... Our fundamental assumption now is that these apps that you have available to you are going to start to decline in their support for Blueprint. Now, some, uh, most of the, the very popular apps that a lot of our clients have installed today do work for, for Blueprint and Stencil. Uh, it looks like some of the developers have had to go back and do diligence on creating documentation for Blueprint, and then there's separate documentation for Stencil. It's much easier on Stencil, but with Blueprint, you have to like, uh, you know, install some extra scripts and, uh, you know, update some of your code a little bit. So not only is it easier to install apps on, on Stencil, it's our fundamental assumption that in the future, um, we're going to see app developers not supporting Blueprint at all just because there's not, they're not going to have a, a, a player base, right? They're going to have customers buying from that segment anymore. So I think you're really just future-proofing your site. Uh, number nine is having access to, to big commerce features, and then number 10, having access to these, to these apps. So, you know, the last two points really just kind of drive it home about it's a, it's a matter of time, right, before you'll be able to um, not have access to the apps and features of big commerce. So really uh, highly recommend moving your store to stencil um, it's really just a matter of you know how many technical integrations do you have on your site um, you know how long is it going to take uh, the costs involved to move you guys to stencil um, and typically the answer is the less that you have modified your blueprint theme the faster and the, and the, the less dollars that it, it will cost to move you over there right if you just have a base theme you've made no changes to it I mean, shoot, you could probably just uh, purchase a stencil theme and, and transfer it over. So really, you know, what our company is doing at this point is, you know, guiding our clients into uh, making that transition easier and also dealing with more complicated examples, right? So if you have a, a completely custom theme uh, or, or you've modified your header and your footer and your navigation, and you have some technical integrations that you don't want to lose whenever you transfer over to Stencil, then we need to we have a conversation about that, right? Like we need to just figure out like, it's going to take X hours, it's going to take our team this much to port you over. Um, and it's just a matter of time too. You know, a lot of our clients, they don't want to deal with this, right? Um, they need to, to leverage the risk there and, and make sure that they're ready for the future and have all those features that are available to them. Um, and so we also just kind of offer a, a white glove approach to you know, getting you on a stencil. So if you have any questions, uh, love to answer them, but those are the top 10 things that uh, moving to stencil will do for your business. And let us know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks.